And this morning, I want to preach to you about the trumpet of God. The trumpet of God. Did you know today's the first day of the Feast of the Trumpets? And it's a two-day holiday that God gave to Moses and commanded the people to observe. And he didn't say to remember it for a few years or till they got to the promised land. He said, remember this forever throughout every generation. And today is Rosh Hashanah, Feast of the Trumpets, today and tomorrow. And it is a very prophetic time. But what it means to me today in 2015 and for you is that the trumpet of God can be heard by your heart as a call to come be a part of His bride, to be a part of His family. You see, the bride of Christ is the church. And if you're saved, if you know Jesus and you know that you know He lives in your heart, then you're a part of that bride. And so today I want to just ask you right up front, do you know for certain that you're ready to go to heaven, that you're ready, that you've given your life to Christ? Because if so, then you've already heard the call of God once in your life, maybe several times in your life, but one day you're going to hear the trumpet and the call of God to come live with Him forever. And it could be today, for me, it could be my last day on earth and God may call my name and call me home to be with Him. It could happen to any of us. But someday He's going to call us all, all who are alive and remain. And we're all going to go home and be with Him. So we need to be ready to meet Jesus face to face. Amen? Today is, as I said, the Feast of the Trumpets. And so I want to give you, real quickly, some scriptures. Not every one of them, but a few things about the trumpet of God. The trumpet of God is something that it can be very real in your life as a Christian. Uh, a friend told me this week that she said, I am really trying to make God more real in my life. I'm trying to spend more time praying and spend more time reading the Bible because I want God to be more present in my life. And so I want you to think about the trumpet of God in that respect. Because the trumpet of God is found all through the Bible. In Numbers chapter 10, in fact, in Numbers chapter 10, the Bible says this in verse 2. Make a trumpet of silver, one whole piece make these trumpets that you may use them for the calling of the assembly and the journeying of the camps alright so they had the shofar that they blew for various things but they also had trumpets made of silver and this says that the trumpet of silver one solid piece of silver and use them for the calling of the assembly together. And, and then it also says in uh, still in Numbers in verse 9 10 9 if you go to war in your land against the enemy that oppresses you you shall blow an alarm with the trumpet and you shall be remembered before your Lord and your God, and you shall be saved from your enemies. And then in the next verse, also in the day of your gladness, in your solemn days, in the beginnings of your months, you shall blow the trumpets over your burnt offerings and over the sacrifice of your peace offerings, that they may be for a memorial before your God. I am the Lord your God. You see, God told them how to worship Him. And He said one of the best ways 
to worship me is to sound off these trumpets and make a loud and joyous noise and, and fill the air with the sound and God will hear you. And I know that we're not up here with a chorus of trumpets today, but we are playing the piano and we are singing with our voices and we are lifting up God's name. And, and I would love to be able to play the trumpet, but I, when I see these scriptures, I see that God is telling them, be prepared for the battle at hand. Be prepared for the battle at hand. Just like War Room, this movie is just talking about the battle of spiritual warfare, and you can win it through prayer. I believe God answers prayer, don't you? Testimony after testimony all over the room. We could take hours to give them how God answers prayer. The trumpet of the Lord. The trumpet of the Lord trumpeting to the Lord or God sending angels to sound the trumpet. All through the Bible you hear the message about the trumpets. And it was so important to God that He said every year I want you to have a celebration just to remember the trumpets. The feast of the trumpets. And I believe that was God's way of getting us ready for heaven. That's God's way of getting us to where we can recognize the call of God in our hearts and that we can recognize the call of God when that trumpet sounds. He said, use the trumpet to call together the assembly of the believers. I believe that's what the old church bell was for. The old church bell was like that trumpet call ding 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 told the community it's time to start church and today we start out with music and singing and praises and and we call together the assembly the assembly of the believers is extremely important there's a philosophy today that you don't need church you don't really need to get together and assemble yourselves but that's not what I see in the Bible from Old Testament to New, God's people came together. And they praised God together. And they prayed together. And God poured His Spirit out on them. And if you want to be strong in the Lord, we need to assemble together. Even in the New Testament, He said, Do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together. He said that in Hebrews. So the trumpet called all believers... Wouldn't it be awesome if we could just hear a trumpet sound in every city in America today that would call all believers in Jesus Christ to come together as one without differences, without divisions, to come together as one if you believe in Jesus Christ. We need to assemble ourselves together. Do you know when those people assembled together, these were people with families, with businesses, with uh, trades, and, and all kinds of things. There's millions of Jewish people in this time. It wasn't just a few hundred people or a few dozen people. There were millions of them. And so he set princes over each one, or leaders, or governors, or whatever you want to call them. And he had the leaders of each tribe, and he, he drew them together with the trumpet. He called them to come together with the trumpet first, and then they would announce the sounds of the trumpet in all of their areas and draw everyone together. And so it was a symbol of unity. A trumpet is a call to unity. You know they had disagreements. Somebody was probably mad at somebody else. Somebody probably thought they had done them wrong in a business deal, or somebody probably thought they said something bad about them or whatever. But this is not what that's about, and that's not what church is about. Church is not about talking about the bad things with each other. Church is about Jesus. Church is about Jesus. And I'm not perfect, and neither are you, but we're forgiven by the blood of Jesus Christ. And so he called out with the trumpet to draw everybody in, to assemble as one in unity. 
to prepare for the battle. The whole thing is about preparing for the battle. First, we've got to know who the enemy is. You're not my enemy. I'm not your enemy. We are not the enemy. The people out there are not the enemy. Satan is the enemy. Satan is the enemy. He lies, he steals, and destroys. And he wants to take our souls. And he wants to take the souls of our friends and neighbors and our children and our grandchildren. He wants to steal from Jesus the souls that Jesus died for. He wants to steal from Jesus Christ the souls that He died for, that He hung on the cross for. Satan doesn't care one thing about you. He doesn't care one thing about me. He just wants to hurt Jesus Christ. That's why we're in the battle. Because we're the object of the battle. We're the object of the battle. It's a battle between good and evil, between angels and demons. It's a battle between Jesus and Lucifer. The Bible says Lucifer, next to Jesus, Lucifer was the strongest entity in the universe. There's God, Jesus, and Lucifer. Holy Spirit and God being the same. Lucifer is that strong. And he is obviously strong because he is winning the majority of the souls of the human race. Christians are a minority. Satan has led the overwhelming majority of people away from God. That doesn't mean Jesus lost. It means people picked the wrong team to be on. I want to caution you about choosing the wrong team. God put you here for a reason. He called us here because we all share one common goal, and that's to reach people for Christ. We don't ever want the old devil to get us off in left field fighting for the wrong team. I get amused at Facebook debates. How about y'all? But I get perturbed at people who claim to be Christians, but they're always arguing for the other side. Well, I'm a Christian, but... Well, I'm a Christian, but... Let me tell you, Jesus don't need team members like that. Jesus doesn't need team members that are going to cause more harm than good. The church doesn't need team members that are going to stir up trouble. In fact, if your goal is to stir up trouble, I want to introduce you to those doors right back there. Because you don't need to be here. People need to be here because they love Jesus. Amen? We can disagree on all kinds of things, but we can agree on that cross right over there. And if we can agree on that, we're going to go to that one place where there's one God and one bride and one bridegroom. And the trumpet's going to sound to call us there. Now, not only did those trumpets blow to call people to assemble together but it also said the trumpets called the leaders to come together and the trumpets called the priest and the pastors so now I want to badmouth pastors a little bit pastors that love Jesus and preach the word are on the right team pastors that make up their own message and don't preach the word and rewrite the Bible are working for the devil. You've got to know the difference. It's up to you to know the difference. Nobody can know it for you. And the only way you can know the difference is you've got to know the Bible. 
If you don't know the Bible, you can be led astray. So it's important to study to show thyself approved. Amen? You don't have to get everything right every time. I certainly don't get everything right every time. There's some things I used to think were a certain way, and now 30 years later I realized I didn't know what I was talking about. Does that make me a waffler? No, it means I'm ever learning, and I want to constantly get better and know more, and God reveals His Word to me the more I read it. The trumpet of God, you see, is a call for us to line up with God. It's a call for us to line up with His Word. I remember the school bell ringing. When I think, when I read this passage, I think about that school bell. You know, that school bell would go off and we were all supposed to be in our place. Right? Today, everybody seems to think you can get second chance, third chance, fourth chance, fifth chance, sixth chance, and never-ending chances. Hey, I'm a person that believes that God has given me dozens of chances. So I believe in second, third, fourth, fifth ch chances. But I also know that there's going to come a day when there's no more chances. There's going to be a reckoning day. The day I draw my last breath, I'm going to meet my Maker. And He's going to say, come in. You're one of mine. Or He's going to say, depart from me, for I never knew you. See, there's a real heaven. It's a real place. And there's a real hell. It's a real place. And one day, that trumpet's going to sound for me. And I'm going to meet my Maker. And if I know the Lord, which I do, I stand before you right now and tell you I know for a fact that I'm going to go to heaven. Not because I'm good, not because I'm the preacher, not because I'm so righteous, but because Jesus Christ died for me. And I accept that as my salvation. And so one day that trumpet's going to sound for me and it, it could be today or any day. We don't know. We're just one heartbeat away or one breath away. We're just one step away from crossing over. But it also says that over in Joshua, and I'm going to close with this. It says over in Joshua chapter 6, verse 4 and 5, God told the priest to take the ark and carry it. And go, he said, line up in front of the ark and blow the trumpets to announce the coming of the ark and to announce the presence of God. Seven priests will bear the ark, seven trumpets of ram's horns. Now, these are the trumpets of ram's horns, not the silver trumpets. And on the seventh day, surround the city seven times, and the priest shall blow with the trumpets. And it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, the people will shout with a great shout, and the walls of the city shall fall down flat, and the people will ascend up, every man, straight before the Lord. And we know the rest of the story. They surrounded the city. They carried the ark. That meant God was with them. They lined up the trumpeters. They blew the trumpets. They shouted with a great shout. The walls fell and they won the battle. I want to know how bad you want to win the battle in your life today. How bad do you want to win? How bad do you want to win today? How bad do you want to win? Shout! Don't cower. Don't turn. Don't let the devil get you depressed. Don't let him get you down. Face it head on. Blow the trumpet. Shout out to God. And win the victory in your life because the victory is yours in Jesus' name. You don't have to be in the state you're in. If God is dealing with you, you might be right where God wants you. Believe me, I know 
that there are people here that God is using and He's using this church. Let me tell you just one little tiny sliver of how God is using this church. There is a man that's associated with our ministry very closely. His name is Earl Cox. We broadcast his messages on the gospel station every day. And Earl is Benjamin Netanyahu's uh, ambassador to the evangelical world. I'm on his board of directors. He is very closely associated with us, even though you've never met him, but I'm hoping to change that real soon. He has meetings with world leaders. He has meetings with Netanyahu, and he is uh, very important in saving Israeli families by providing bomb shelters for them. Well, this week, that man, a part of our ministry right here, met with Speaker of the House Boehner and pled with him to influence the House to reject the deal in Iran. We have had conference calls after conference calls about that. And he took action. And I don't know what will happen, but I'm saying don't sit back and be a spectator. Don't sit back and allow yourself to just sit on the bench. Get in the game. Shout a loud shout. Speak the name of Jesus and things will change in your life. You can make a difference more than you ever thought you could and God will make a difference in your life. You have Jesus in your heart. The trumpets are going to sound. The walls are going to come down. And one day, the trumpet's going to sound for you to meet the Lord face to face.